of my favorite things to come out of this awful show, Love is Blind seven, Season 7, is that all, so many of these men have told on themselves that they are <laughs> bad in bed, terrible in bed, selfish pricks who don't give a crap about the little kitty cat. And before we get into it, make sure you follow my Patreon. That's where I have my lives, my more personal stuff, my travel stuff. Um, that's how you can keep up with what I'm doing, even if you don't join a tier. Please go over there, check it out. The link is in the caption. Like, some of them are just freaky. Like, like the little Labrador Steven here. He used to be my least favorite character. Um, I think Ramses is, has taken first place now. I did, like, two hours of content on this. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of tired of talking about it. I have a lot to say. I want to break down just how much some of these men have admitted they suck or, um, their fiancés have told us and i'm here for it i am so here for it. like today i want to focus on hannah and all the things we can learn from hannah not all the things just the things around this subject because nick and her relationship deserves its own long deep dive but before i get into just how much nick apparently sucks and bad not because he can't but because he won't do anything to care about women's pleasure, which is really the heart of the problem. That is the heart, that is the center of the pleasure gap is men just not caring, not caring, meh. They just don't care, they don't want to. <gasps> anyway, but you know, just a little recap. Like these women are so beautiful. They are so beautiful. And then they end up with a guy who has three children and just didn't tell her. <laughs> oh God. You know, and that's why, you know, as much as like, like, I'm kind of glad that these men are being exposed for all these things. It's even being selfish lovers like Nick D. How does a woman like this? How does a woman this, this beautiful and smart and funny, like, how does she, how does this woman end up with this man and then he cheats on her? Like, uh, this show is ridiculous as enraging it is. It is such a good example on why women are doing art for B. For me, all the way. Some women are like, this is not worth it. If these beautiful women, these smart, successful, amazing women who, uh, you know, I don't know any of them, by the way. I don't know any of them. They, all the people on the show could be terrible. I don't know. But based on how it's edited and what we see, these women are so above all these dudes. This guy, this electrician who, who's also a hobo, he, he's unemployed, you know, knew he'd lost, lose his job and was okay. And let, you know, I love that Monica made him pay. She even showed on Instagram the Venmo receipt. $400 she made this man pay her. I love that. I love that. I love a lot of, a lot of, yes, they are, a lot of women are getting kind of humiliated on the show, but it's the nature of the experiment. They try to make it work out with these losers. But at the end of every season, I'm like so happy that a lot of these women showed us also hard conversations. They showed us what these men do. They, and then a lot of them choose themselves in the end. So in the end, like that's kind of the lesson is women choose themselves, <laughs> you know? In fact, I forgot I wrote about this until that literally just came out of my mouth. This was, when was this? 2000, okay, two years ago, I wrote this for Harper's Bazaar. And this season, <laughs> love is why women choose themselves. Um, I mean, it doesn't, not all the women. Last season there was, what's that woman's name? I ended up with Jeremiah. And they broke up too, like don't choose themselves with the exception of like Brett and Tiffany and like there's only two couples in the whole history of the show that I truly like I mean I love Bliss but I'm, I'm not a fan of her partner but like they're maybe okay but other than um Cameron and Lauren season one and um Brett and Tiffany I just don't like any of the other couples I don't think they sound healthy again I don't know them. so at the end of the day pretty much every season teaches women um no matter what you think a man is he's lying <laughs> um he's probably selfish he's probably an entitled prick who hasn't unpacked any of his uh entitlement that he was taught he was socialized into under patriarchy oh and also he's probably a uh hobo sexual he probably doesn't even have a job or money, you know? In fact, some of these men literally are abusing women on camera and then their women are suing. But that's another video. But in the end, even when men humiliate women, the women come out on top. Because the show is so relatable. Who has not been humiliated by a man in at least one of these ways? Who has not dated down? Who has not been cheated on, fooled? Um, who, who has not had at least one of these terrible experiences with 
what these men do. I'm not saying it's just men. There's a lot of women on here that I don't like either. Micah, I don't know, whatever. There's a lot of women I just don't, whatever. I think they have a lot of growing to do. But at the end of the day, we can learn a lot from these women. And sometimes it's almost like they sacrifice themselves on the altar of reality TV to show us how selfish these men are and why women are just not dating. God, I've already got, did a whole hour long breakdown of the way this man speaks out of both sides of his mouth and he's like, set, thinks he's a good guy and actually is so disrespectful and terrible to Marissa. Is this a new episode dropped? I have even more to say. But let's remember, in case you're new here, um, he, 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 Schmeg's, it has to be enjoyable for him. It's supposed to be, you know, like mutually enjoyable, even though I don't care if you don't feel safe uh, and you might die or get an STI. Um, I might die because of STI or pregnancy or something else because I don't want to wear a rubber. It. I don't want to. You you and your silly little birth control problem, you know, your what is it, vitamin deficiency. Like no matter how much pain you're in on your period, you, I want you to take those pills because I need more pleasure. It's more important than anything because I need it to be enjoyable. Again, what are you doing wrong? You can't enjoy it without that. I don't even believe that. I don't believe that. Um, but also you could always just focus on that, you know. You can eat that. We know Nick doesn't eat that, but that more on that in a minute. We got this guy who is keeps trying to poke her in the butt um, and says it's an act, but it's not. I mean, don't ever believe them when they say, oops, oops, I didn't know which hole. Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And I love her. She's like, I'm saving my butt stuff for Mary. So, sorry, bro. No, that's fair. This is the man who pretty much openly admitted that he sticks his thing into pineapples, macaroni and cheese, you know, anything warm and... Mushy, I guess. And then, of course, when she asks, Are, have you done that? No. <laughs> right. She doesn't even believe you, bro. He also, again, I'm going to get into Nick in a minute. But this man literally said that he's obsessed with a bovina. Not the vulva. Not the, not the thing that was literally created just for women's pleasure. That is, that is his only purpose is women's pleasure. That's not the most important thing. It's the bovina. I'm sorry, but if you have a... And you have mm, sex with mm, people with, mm, um, and you are not paying attention to the, you're doing it wrong. So as much as I'm going to hate this moment forever for Monica, I hope she has a thriving career doing whatever it is she wants to do with this social media presence that she has now. I hope she gets modeling contracts. I hope the world for her. And I hope this man dies alone. My point is, is that I, like, this, it, again, I do not agree with this show. I hate this show. But man, we this is such teachable moments. We can learn so much from these jerks. And the hard lessons that the women who try to date them and try to marry them learn the hard way. I hate this. I hate it, but it's very relatable. That's why I like about this show. God, it's like, well, we're all we're all we're all in this hellhole together. We've all been treated like crap. Because if these beautiful women who could be like supermodel, uh, can be can treated like this, if these women who just Give off an energy that makes you want to be their friend really bad and who've just accomplished so much stuff. If these women who have each other's backs, well, except that one, uh, what's that one who's like trying to steal Hannah's, <laughs> like that's, I'm gonna make a whole video about her. Um, but all these women, if even they can get screwed over this bad and even they are having to learn hard lessons themselves about what they need to work on in terms of themselves and you know their standards or maybe even just now are more aware of how much men lie. I don't know, I find it comforting. I find it, I, I'm enraged for them. I'm so mad for them. And But I also feel seen. I feel so seen by having to watch these women endure the worst conversations with these men. These men who are just like, oh no, I don't know how to boil pasta. How do I boil water? And then is pissed that, 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 that she calls him immature. <laughs> These dudes all suck. They all suck so bad. And this Nick's little like necklace and the way he keeps changing how we talk. Like the, this man drives me crazy. So that's, that's who we're going to focus on today. How this man got the nickname... Nick's, Nick Suave or something, well, I forget, it was whatever. How they were all like, ooh, like they assumed this man was so hot because of what he said about himself. <laughs> it's a sick joke that this is the cat. <laughs> this is like a 
real life Tinder date where, you know, there are all these photos of like maybe what they used to do with it. And then you go out on a date with them and they're like, <laughs> I can't boil water and don't eat. <laughs> like this man really <laughs> thinks he's the prize. This man. <laughs> Who lives in his parents' basement? Doesn't pay, doesn't even pay for his own phone bill. And by the way, I don't have anything against people living with their family. I have an issue with men who live with their parents and clearly don't do anything but create more labor for their mom. Who don't even feed their own cat. Dude admitted he doesn't even feed his own cat. His dad feeds his cat. He doesn't know how to cook for himself, so therefore he's adding additional labor to his mom or his dad, but it's probably his mom. The man um, doesn't even know he had car insurance because apparently his parents are paying for that. And yet will sell himself on a dating app or a dating show as a real estate agent. Working from home, I guess. Working from mom's home. This man said he was going to cook her salmon and pasta for their first meal. And then when she cooked the meal instead, because he didn't, um... Even when she had to ask him to boil water, he asked her six different questions on how you do that. How do you make pasta? How do you boil water? How much water? What temperature? And yet this man is the prize in this uh, Kate or Katie or whoever it is, who's Anna's, Hannah's best friend is trying to steal him. <laughs> like, this show is so realistic. It's so realistic about how much we have to work on ourselves and how much these men lie and play in our faces and say things like this. Oh, you know, I need it. And oh, it's not my fault. I get, you know, the wind blows and I have it. Mm -mm. But by the way, can I stick it in your butt? Oops, I didn't mean to try that. And then after all that, we'll cheat on this woman. T poking her all the time, all the time. And then cheat. You know, it's bad when Nick at his parents' home that he lives in. When... His dad asks him, how on earth did she pick you? He's talking about how wonderful she is. And he's like, yeah, how did she pick you? <laughs> even their parents troll him. <laughs> and even though they all thought he was a smooth talker and full of crap, Hannah went against her intuition. He's like, I don't know, I like his voice. He's sultry, but it'll probably ruin my life. Yes, he will ruin your life. But you know what? Thank God this woman got rejected him before he humiliated her at the altar. One of the things I love about this conversation that she had with Ashley, this is when they're in that like all wearing, you know, like old timey clothes or whatever for a Halloween party or something. And Ashley's like, how are you? And she's like, we're good. And then after saying, this is what she says all the time, but it's so funny. And maybe this is age, but this is also like how women are conditioned. We'll be like, yeah, we're good. I mean, except for the fact that like he sucks in bed. He doesn't make any money. He lives with his parents. He don't, she'll list all the problems they have. And then she'll be like, but you know, I got my own problems and I'm working on myself. So I'm kind of judgmental, but we're good. I love him to death. He loves me. <laughs> like he's basically a king baby selfish prick who flirts with other women and disrespects me all the time, but we're <laughs> so in love. Like <laughs> this is like a, this is such a masterclass study on the way women talk to ourselves, right? Taylor was just like, you know, I don't want him to meet my family unless we're 200%. I already said that. It's, this is a classic example of us watching women self-abandon in real time over and over and over again until they've like, no more, no more. I've lost myself. I've lost my confidence. I've lost my own integrity and self-respect because of this guy. But we watch them be like, do that, that, that talk to ourselves where we're like, this really sucks. But you know, like, it's okay. Cause I got stuff to work on too. La, 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 la. Cause right after this question, all she says is, how are you? <laughs> we're good. And then like, this is, this is the, the thing. <laughs> this is the thing. Remember there's a list. There's like a list of five things that she thinks are huge red flags. She's like, this is the thing. I'm self-aware enough to know my own flaws, right? I think with him, sometimes I'm overcritical and I'm hard on him. I don't think she's too hard on him, honestly. But the fact that she's like, this is the thing. Like women are taught to question ourselves all the time. Now, sometimes we don't enough in terms of like <laughs> how we uh, abandon ourselves to serve others and then end up being like the worst version of ourselves because we lose ourselves. But like we're constantly, we know that part of life is that we have to grow and learn and question ourselves and like heal. And that most of us, I think, know that this is just a journey. You know, and we, we know this because we are in relation with so many people and we take care of so many people and we nurse so many people back to health. We nurse, you know, and we take care of parents, we take care of siblings, we take care of children, we take care of husbands, we take care of their parents, we take care of our parents. Like we're so used to taking care of people 
and being a part of other people's healing process that we know that we are all like working on something, right? I'm not saying all women are always self-reflected. Some of us are stuck, stuck, stuck and repeating the same cycles. I'm not like women are amazing and men suck. You will never hear me say that because how do we end up with terrible dudes other than them lying to us? Um, we have so much indoctrination that we have to unlearn and work on and so much trauma that we are repeating over and over again. So that's why I'm like, we can't heal men. Screw, screw that. Let them heal themselves. We just got to work on our stuff. That is literally the key to our own freedom is not being so centered on them and entangled with them in these cycles of abuse with them. And it's not just men. We'll get entangled with like other people too. But if you, if you date men, you know, it is so hard to do that and not become the worst version of yourself. You have to work through so many things to have a high standard. So we get to see Hannah in real time, like quit her job to go on the show. Almost took up with who I thought was the villain, but he like just disappeared. Leo, the fake art dealer who I don't even think had all that money. And then she ends up with Nick, the other worst dude. Like the fact that this woman ended up with uh, like the two worst options. I'm actually not worse because they all suck. They all suck. I don't, there's like not, no one even takes the cake at this point. But Nick, I, this, the, we learn a lot from Hannah because she says out loud things that a lot of us will not say out loud. I love, she's teaching. I mean, this, this woman actually gives me hope. Most of the women on the show give me hope in that they are confronting men with some of the, the things that they're saying that are just, they're doing. Marissa's conversation about the mental load go over that into another uh another video because that was a master class and a man being like that's not important to me i don't care i don't plan i live in the moment her being like screw you i'm not doing all this but of course she didn't say it quite like that but she said it so hannah is like no i'm hard on him and then she says this because i'm so overcritical and hard on myself this is so relatable i literally will wake up and be like look for something my husband's doing wrong because I'm constantly doing that with myself. God, Melanie, you could do this better. You could do this better. And so I project that out. So the fact she's even aware that her harshness is oftentimes rooted in her own self-criticism. Great. This is something we have to work on constantly. She's like, I'm working on that. And <laughs> he has stuff to work on though. So then she goes through this whole thing. <laughs> I would love to have been a fly on the wall while he's watching this episode. <laughs> she literally just told the whole world this man is a selfish lover. <laughs> In this conversation, before she gets into like how much she hates eating this, um, she talks about how she wants to be the fun hand. You know, her and Ashley are talking about this, about how she's so, because she's so critical of him and all the things he's, I mean, and again, they have a very short period of time to figure out if this works or not. So, you know, she was all fun in the pot. And then she, in real life, she's like, man, this guy's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm gonna have to teach him a lot. So she's very critical of him, you know, who he says he is and who he actually is not really matching. So she's not as much fun. And she's like, maybe I should be more fun with him. Well, <laughs> no time for that. And again, she's like, he's great to me. And I love Nick. He's perfect for me. <laughs> and then says all this stuff right after. How many of you have done this being like, oh my God, I mean, I love him so much. And he loves me so much, but, and then <laughs> like, <laughs> Two hours of all the ways you're being abused or exploited or ignored or whatever. <laughs> but you know, I think I could be the best thing in the world for Nick. Stop doing this. And if there's another thing we can learn is to, we've all, maybe not all. Okay. This is so relatable. We, we look for men's potential. We think that we can be, I mean, this is like shooting the beast again. How could you not think about the world this way when rom-coms teach us this? From when we were children. It's these beasts, these like oh whatever like these little hermit um buffalo looking men living in a castle because they were selfish and had a curse put on by the way like they deserved the curse that they're living um and then you know they take us on as a sex slave basically you know because our dad sucked and was like i don't want to in prison here take my daughter you know it's crappy dad and then we end up in the hands of a beast i hate that movie so much I gotta do a whole video breakdown of that. I hate that movie so much. A beast who throws tables and has temper tantrum and all of his little inanimate objects servants are terrified of him and walk on eggshells. And then Hannah or Belle comes into his life and fixes him and refines him because he has potential. So that's like all of us have been taught this. Maybe not all of us believe in this. We've all been taught to fix men, to make them not such, like to... <laughs> To not make them so, to make them palpable to the world, to make them not as selfish and, and criminal um, and violent and, you know, just unmotivated and such. 
maybe um, that we can teach them to be men. And if you need this reminder today, that's not your job. You're not getting paid for that. You will not be rewarded for that. You will have nothing but years or decades of trauma from trying to do that. We are not Belle. We don't get a mansion with all this stuff. We don't get teapots to talk to. We don't get this beast man turning into a hot dude either. We get crap. And we get that they cheat on us anyway. <laughs> and then we have a bunch of children that we have to raise because they don't really want. They just want more objects uh, that you know, walk on eggshells around them and serve them. But we all, hopefully not all, but most of us know exactly what this is about. You know, potential, his potential. I think I could be the one to turn him around. And here's the thing, if you're the one to turn him around and that's your goal and he knows that that's what you're doing, you're gonna fix him and get him in just the right place so he can leave you and cheat on you and get with a, a, a woman he, who's younger or prettier than you or like somehow he thinks is better than you. That's the thanks you will get. Ask any woman who's married to a man who cheated and left for a younger woman and started another family. That man just took and took and took and she worked on him to be, help him become not so selfish. Um, and you know, he learned his lessons and moved on. The next woman will always get the work that you invest in him if he's not doing it for himself. You know, just because there's so many things that then Ashley's like, you could show him. Yes. See, Ashley suffers from the same thing. We all do. Um, hopefully not you. Hopefully there's exceptions to it. But this is like, it is, it is so in here because of all the things that we've been taught. And it's even more so across cultures, across uh, across the world, across, you know, like it, it can be really extreme depending on what community you are raised in. But I think Bourbon Bougie says the dust is global. Um, so the codependency is global too. <laughs> the pick -me is global too because this is how we were indoctrinated, most of us. And then Ashley tells a story about, remember in the airport when you were like, I want you to try new cuisines. I want to try this and that. You're you're used to sticking to the same thing. And then Ashley was like, yeah. And I was like, wow, go Hannah. And I actually really like the way Hannah calls Nick out on all of his stuff and constantly pushes him to be the man he promised he would be. The problem is Nick is not interested in being that man. He's not interested in changing and he has so much he has to change that he will never catch up to her. And here's the thing. The point of relationships, not just romantic relationships, is you're two people who are growing together you know the problem is, is when you date men the only way that you grow is in your uh, connection to your sense of justice and your anger with most men because they will crap on you more and more and then you basically you realize how much pain you can actually tolerate and hopefully at a certain point you realize no i deserve better than this but they uh, uh, a selfish you know entitled king baby man the only thing he will teach you is endurance of pain. And eventually, hopefully, to respect yourself after enduring so much pain. But what men learn is how to, how to stay in touch with their mom and dad, how to show up for things, how to, like they learn um, how to have hard conversations. They learn so much from us, but a lot of them, even though we give them all this, these free lessons and teach them so much, they don't care. Some of them, like, they won't ever use that on us. They'll just take that into the next relationship that they cheat on us for and, and apply all those rules that or all those lessons to them. They get social capital. They get raises. They get respected in their communities because now they're dads and fathers and, you know, like, everyone. Are, whoa, you know what I mean? They get so much respect for being with a woman and having children with her. But what they give to us, if they don't really love us, really love us and are unpacking their entire, what they give us is hard lessons um, on how to deal with our trauma coming from them. But in a healthy relationship where he, it, he's working on himself and unpacking this stuff, you're working on yourself and unpacking this stuff. And together you learn and grow together. But in relationships with a lot of these men, it's this. He's getting all this from you, including lessons, learning how to dress better, learning how to eat better, having someone, come on, hey, hey, someone managing his schedule, someone doing all this stuff for him, reminding him to go to the dentist, reminding him to get that appointment so that he doesn't die of cancer because he just did it, get it checked out. And what are we getting? We, a lot of times we die. We literally die from managing this man's stress, managing his life because he won't. And we're so busy raising his children that he won't claim or be a part of and raising him that we actually go down, right? 
but that's how it's set up. I can teach him, I can reform him, I can make him a better man. And then in the end, what do they do? A lot of times they humiliate us. Have an affair, get exposed for something, end up in the most um, talked about case, uh, it, it, you know, in France or maybe around the world of your husband um, graping you with 90 different men. Like, but what are we doing? We're trying to broaden his horizon. I'm not saying again that we're, you're not gonna do this in a relationship, but he should be broadening your horizon. He should be teaching you a lot of stuff about yourself, about things like he should have a lot of cool stuff to help you become a better person. But that's not how they think. They're parasites. They just, they just literally like, you're just breastfeeding them. Just endlessly. Just producing all the stuff, giving it away for free. And they're not giving anything back. And they're not even cute. And not even as cute as babies. And then we make excuses like this. Yeah, I am, you know, <laughs> broadening his arrival. That's the thing. He just hasn't had the opportunity to. Oh, really? Oh, really? Uh, he's living in his parents' basement. The man doesn't even have to pay rent. He doesn't even have to take care of himself. How could he not have the opportunity? You can broaden your horizons as a single person so much. I did. That's what I spent so much time doing before I even started dating. And, and I've waited longer than most people. I didn't start dating till my late 30s. By then, man, I had so, I, I was so confident and had so much cool stuff that I learned because I wasn't, my life wasn't derailed by men. I wasn't distracted by men and their endless additional labor that's not even, <laughs> they're not even grateful for. So stop thinking they aren't, they aren't evolved because they didn't have an opportunity. They are playing video games. They are drinking. They are climbing. They're doing all kinds of stuff, but they're not working on themselves or broadening their horizons a lot of times. A lot of them are even literally living in their basement of their parents' home. Not because they have to, but because they just don't want to work harder. I would not be surprised if those parents wouldn't, wouldn't help him pay rent to get his own place. Why would he when he has a maid and a mommy to take care of him in-house and doesn't have to pay rent? And then we get into how he needs to broaden his horizons schmegly too. Oh boy. So she tells us way more than any of us should ever know about this man. Which, of course, some might think is disrespectful. Um, but... I don't know. I'm so tired of covering for men and pretending like they are doing things that they're not. I mean, I think she's so fed up with him at this point that she's like, all right, I'm just going to talk about our Schmeg's life too. <laughs> I think what he's had with my partners, he told me, like, with past partners, where she's basically saying that it's just... He just assumes that women get off and that he probably didn't even think to ask her. And so Ashley's like, yeah. That's the thing, we have to get there. And the way that we get there doesn't always come naturally. It takes work. We can't just sit there and be a starfish, which by the way, is a big conversation in France right now about how a lot of these men are using that as a justification for um, graping Giselle, the woman whose husband drunk her. A lot of men see nothing wrong with the starfish. That's almost what they prefer. Just you lay there and let them do it to you. You're not even a part of this. Your body is just an extension of their hand that they're doing this with. And that is the thinking of so many men. And you know, it's been that, it's always been their thinking, honestly, or at least under patriarchy, more or less. Even the ones who care about your pleasure, a lot of times they still don't care about your pleasure. It's more like, ooh, I'm the best lover. It's still about their ego. But so many men literally don't care. Don't care. They don't even think that you have a right to pleasure, which is insane. But then again, a lot of us don't realize we have a right to pleasure. I used to think that way. It never occurred to me I should be mad, mad after every time I hooked up with a man and I got nothing out of it. Once I started getting mad, I made them please me first before they could do anything else. Mm -mm. Front and center, baby. My, my uh, orgasm is gonna be the most important here. So she's like, you know, we have to work for it, right? We're not just gonna get there. When I've been communicative for the past two weeks about what I need, so I told him what I need from Exley. If it turns me on and you don't do it, you continue the same thing that gets you off, then it's frustrating. Because I want pleasure too, yeah! We all want, we all want this taken care of. And again, I've told y'all before, I didn't have my real, like real first O until I was 36. So I started putting my O at the center of my relationship. I will not hook up with you if my O is not the priority here. Uh, Payback. So, sh so she grabs a toy. He's very jealous of my toy. See, I've made videos about that, y'all. I made videos about that. If he is jealous of your toy, A, he probably sucks in bed. B, um, you are dealing with an insecure, immature man who will ruin your life. 
He may, it's, of course, he's going to be a little jealous of the toy, but he should keep that to himself and talk to a therapist about that and still let you use the toy. That, I mean, I, in fact, I wrote an article, a reported story um, for Playboy a, a while ago where I interviewed some of the cast members from Grace and Frankie. And we talked about this one episode where Bud, um, one of the sons, and his girlfriend or fiance, I forget where they were at that time, um, she started using, uh, you know, the Vine Rainer <laughs> that, <laughs> that Grace and Frankie created. And, he, and Bud was jealous. And then there was a whole lesson on, we can, y'all can be friends but I'm not giving up my toy because of your ego. And so I talk about that in this article. Hopefully you can still access it because it was such a great conversation about how men think and how they need to get over themselves because that changed my life when I started bringing a toy into the bedroom every time, just in case. Maybe I won't need to use it, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I won't have to, but I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it because I'm so tired of sacrificing my pleasure on the sake, on the altar of men's egos. So then she goes on to say she hasn't had a lot of people. The people I've, I have had it with um, that we've been very, uh, explorative and <laughs> Nick's not like that. <laughs> it's, it's almost like it's an 18 year old. <laughs> yeah, I don't even say not even 18. <laughs> Hopefully by 18, there no more. Like things gross him out. This man probably, if you asked him to buy you a, t a box of tampons, he'd be like, ew. This man is the kind of man that you probably, um, I mean, they even said earlier that this is the kind of guy that she said, I think that was her uh, back in the pods when they were, or when they were talking with the girls. When she said, I think this is the kind of guy where I couldn't go to bed without my makeup. And they're like, yeah, that's a red flag. And she's like, yeah, but I like him. This is the same kind of guy where you are hiding your bloody tampons in the bottom of the of the trash can in the bathroom because you know you just know that like he can't like he's grossed out by reproductive body parts and the fluids of them I'm not saying that i love blood i'm just saying how many women have to tiptoe around men's ick factor when they are the ick factor look at this eating it's just not what he thinks about <laughs> It's like, okay, well, you need to realize uh, a woman needs pleasure just as much as a man. Speak, Hannah. And Ashley's like, absolutely. Yeah. So I love that this conversation happened because sometimes women need this reminder. And especially young women watching this show, I hope they paid attention to this scene. And then Hannah's like, you know, he doesn't like to eat. <laughs> and Ashley was like, what? <laughs> I can't tell you how much I love this conversation. And they pan over to him. <laughs> And his silly hat, his little paper boy hat. <laughs> so then they're like, to fix this problem, you have to communicate. You have to be careful. But, but, and here we go. Then she touches on another thing that women find very frustrating is that we have to tiptoe around the ego of men. They don't tiptoe around our trauma. They don't tiptoe around our trauma at all. If anything, they exploit our trauma, the trauma of other men. They know that we, we've either experienced it or our friends have experienced it. Or, you know, we just know how dangerous it is and how scared we are. So they literally exploit our trauma and our trauma responses to coerce us in this man. They also get to feel good about themselves if they eat your... <laughs> because they know they're rare. And like, it's like such a big deal that a man cares about our pleasure that they must be a good guy if they do that, right? They will be completely unaware of or just don't care about all these things that have happened to us in our lives that could trigger us literally when we are being our most vulnerable and intimate with them. Yeah. Let's start trying out things they saw in corn. Oh, my choker today. See how she likes that. They literally don't care about all of our trauma and all these things that, that like could literally throw us into a full-blown PTSD attack. And then we do all this. You know, I'm not like, maybe you could do this. You know, we can't even get angry at how much they suck in bed. We can't even tell them how much they suck in bed. And it's not because they suck at it. It's because they don't care. And their fragile little ego and their shame will keep them from educating them. Meanwhile, women will literally pay someone to teach them how to um, be a better lover. We'll go to sex therapy. We will watch video. We'll read book. We'll read endless articles about how to give a, a mean, mm -hmm. and they ain't reading crap. And then they'll go and they'll memorize all the statistics of every single player for their little fantasy football team. And they'll know the set list of their band when, you know, when they went on tour like 10 years ago. They'll remember
remember what the encore song was in at the Roxy in 96 uh, when Panic played there, but they won't remember your birthday and they won't even look up Google how to eat the entitlement, y'all. It's the entitlement. And then we have to get around there and be like, hey, um, do you think maybe, do you think, um, I don't know, like, um, and then and meanwhile we're getting more and more pissed. The rage, that sense of justice that we deserve pleasure. Either A, it explodes, or B, we just push it down and push it down. And then all of a sudden, we just don't care about it. We just don't care about schmags. We're just not schmagsual people. We'll tell ourselves that. And they did that. Because, I mean, why would you care? Why would you feel schmagsual? Why would you feel empowered? Why would you even have desire if the men in your life constantly smash your desire with trauma, indifference, laziness, and we do all this. We talk to so many women. How do I, how do I tell him that I like don't want him to choke me? How do I tell him that like I'm not really getting off and we fake and we do all kinds of things because we don't want to die or we don't want to hurt their ego. We don't want them to punish us later on or the, a million other things that could happen because we don't fake or lie or tiptoe. It's infuriating y'all. Because, oh, because it can be so humiliating for a man to feel bad about that. It will humiliate us on national TV, but we feel bad even just humiliating, humiliating them in private by saying, you're not taking care of my pleasure. Ego, yeah, I don't want to hit his ego. Hit those egos. You have to be very careful about the way you approach it. It's a learning thing. It's a learning thing. Any man, the worst lover can learn how to be a good one. They just don't care. That's the problem. That's the entitlement. And she says all this at the end. Just love Nick. It's just, I, I just really, it's like with Nick, I really love that man. I really do. No, you don't. It's just, I'm just frustrated with him. No, you're being exploited, disrespected, and are invisible to this man. So again, I love him, I love him, I love him. He's great, he loves me. I just get frustrated because he doesn't, not the same level as I am at understanding things. And he wants to get there. He just never had the chance to get there. Girl, we gotta stop doing this. And by the things that, that she's not on the same level, she has a list. She lays it out before she breaks it up, up, breaks up with him. It's not just, and she doesn't even list this as one of the reasons that he's selfish in bed, terrible in bed, doesn't care about this. Um, he also is not her level financially, not her level um, in terms of domestic labor and just knowing how to be an adult. He literally is not in any money, bed, bed emotional maturity, connection, thoughtfulness, uh, working on himself, social awareness, respect, like there's a whole list. He just, you know, he wants to get there. He just, he's never had the chance. No, stop telling yourselves this. We have to stop giving them the benefit of the doubt, excusing their bad behavior. This man doesn't care. And he seems to not really have suffered the consequences of not caring. And even though he's living in his parents' basement. And you will not convince me that that is because he has to. I am not like shaming people who live with their parents, but when men live with their parents, there are very few men who will not exploit their parents, but especially their mother. When women live with their parents, we tend to know we have to pay rent or if we're not paying rent, we have to do our own laundry, cook our own meal. Not always. Sometimes our mothers might, you know, baby us too, but they always baby the prince. The prince is always going to get baby. And the prince is not expected to go out and take care of himself. She's expected to find a wife while living in his mom's basement and then moving right in to her apartment, her really nice apartment that she's been paying, she's been working her butt off on. This woman has been taking care of herself since she was in her teenage years. I mean, according to her, maybe not. She, she seems to know way more about finances than I do. Like, I'm really impressed by her as much as I don't like her sometimes and some of the stuff. Like, in general, I actually, like, she's one of my favorite characters. And even her, despite all the things she is calling this man out on, she still says this stuff. And maybe she's saying it to be nice. Maybe she's saying it because she has to because she's on, there's cameras there. But this is what we say. You know, he wants to get there. He just hasn't had the chance. Or he will. It'll just it take him 10 years to read the book. I gave him, I bought for him that I put next to the bed, hoping he'd read it. Or it, it might take him two years to watch 10 TikTok videos I sent of feminists explaining why your wife is gonna leave you. He'll never watch those videos. He doesn't care. And then when you like, serve him divorce papers or you break up with him the way Hannah did, they're gonna be like, what, what happened? 
This is out of nowhere. You gave up. You didn't fight for us. They never fight for you. They'll fight you. They're, if they're never going to fight for you if they don't respect you. And there wouldn't be anything to fight for if they weren't doing all this to begin with. And then after all that, she's sitting here. We find out he sucks in bed. And after knowing, finding out all that, then what is this man doing? He is talking to the woman that was his number one in the pod who's also apparently her best friend, although I'm maybe from Love is Blind, but she's clearly not her best friend in real life. She keeps calling her best friend, but probably I'm guessing the one she connected with the most in the lounge with other women. He's over there talking to her, hitting on her, and basically setting it up so that he can contact her later. And I'm gonna get into that one in the next video. Let me know if you wanna hear that. Because Katie, Katie, you are 36, and you are making a fool of yourself, pining after this dude. Katie, please tell me you went to therapy and worked on your type. God. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you heard the comment song. And please follow my Patreon. You can see uh, my lives over there, travel content. And it's just a way to keep up with me and my work, even if you can't afford a tier. But that's pretty much what pays my bills these days. So uh, the algorithm is so predictable and I never know if I'm going to be able to make bills. My Patreon is the thing where it really gives me that security so I can continue to do this. So thank you for all my patron patrons, whatever, Patreon people. Patron. <laughs> thank you for everybody who's watching. Like, comment, share. That all helps get into the algorithm. And the better the videos do, the more I get compensated for my work. And boy, is Love is Blind a lot of work. It's like 30 hours just watching this show. I have to watch it all once, and then I go back and take pictures of all the scenes. Um, so I like doing this content. It's really time consuming. So thank you all for making these videos do really well. Um, it makes it worth it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me know if you heard that comment. Ah! Welcome to the comment song. Welcome to the comment song. Parquet d'or edition. Welcome to the comment song. What am I doing here if you're new? Here, this is the comment song. Oh my god, this isn't a song. I'm so sorry, I'm just singing, singing words. Blah, blah. Look at the statue in the comment song. Look at the statue in the comment song. They're making out when it's half horse. Blah, 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 blah. Look at these people lifting the world. Can seems kind of weird that they're not women because come on anyway. The comment song. Why am I singing this? Singing the comment song. It's the time I get to show you random stuff while you tap, tap, tap the comment. 
Even if you have nothing to say, just tell me you heard the comment song. Oh my god, this song sucks so bad. Anyway, 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 comment song's over. I hope you had fun. Parked at Doch. This is in Lyon, where I live. I went on a bike ride the other day. I took some photos for you guys. Okay, bye. Let me know if you heard that.